Today we're going to be testing out games on the MacBook Air with the M3 chip. So if you didn't already know, Apple have recently refreshed the entire MacBook Air lineup with the latest generation of Apple Silicon. And today we're going to be testing out the MacBook Air 13 inch with 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. And not only will we be testing the latest AAA macOS native ARM titles, we'll also be looking at whether this machine can handle AAA Windows gaming as well, working through crossover and D3D Metal. And we'll be seeing whether a laptop with no fans and only 8 gigabytes of RAM can handle the demands of modern gaming. So first up we're looking at Resident Evil 4. So this is the remake of the game which was released late last year on macOS. Here we're running on the default settings at 1080p. Metal FX is turned on to quality mode. So this is one of the high profile Mac ports of last year. At the 1080p setting we're fluctuating between about 40 and 55 FPS which is not too bad. This Apple port is very much scalable so it's easily playable on the base Apple Silicon Mac even with the M1 chip with 8GB of RAM and it's playing here nicely even though we're only using 8 GPU cores which is fewer cores than if you're running the MacBook Pro with the M3 chip which has 10 GPU cores. So if you buy this game you also get the iPhone and iPad editions and it scales down to those platforms very nicely. This is also on sale right now so I definitely recommend picking it up especially because you can try out the first level for free. It's a really good showcase of what Mac gaming is capable of if the games are actually optimized for the hardware that they're being played on. Next up we are looking at the very recently released Death Stranding. So here we're running at 1080p with the graphics settings set to default and Metal FX is turned on to quality mode. So generally speaking we're hitting that 40 to 55 FPS mark again. And this is really impressive considering that this is basically the cheapest M3 of this generation. We're running the game with no fan and it just shows how scalable the game can be because on my M3 Max I can run this at 4k 60 frames per second. I can play it on my iPhone or iPad and here we're getting a decent smooth experience from basically basically the cheapest M3 Mac of this lineup and overall it's a gorgeous game to play as well. So make sure to check this out, it's actually on sale on the App Store right now. So next we are looking at last year's big Mac AAA port No Man's Sky. Here we're running at 1080p on the enhanced graphics preset and spatial metal effects is turned on to performance mode. So with this settings we're basically hitting around the 90 to 120 FPS mark. So again this kind of shows what happens when you optimize games for the Apple Silicon Mac, it's very efficient. We're often getting these really good frame rates as well and it's kind of a waste on this screen which is only 60 hertz but it's really nice as this means that there's a lot of headroom in this game. For example if you wanted to play this on like a long flight you could just cap the frame rate and turn down the graphic settings and you could probably play this for several hours. So the good frame rate also keeps up when you're flying and traveling around through the space areas as well through combat and exploration. But it will dip when you're landing on a new planet, it's basically hiding a loading screen at this point. This is generally the most demanding part of the game and even then the frame rates are still not too bad and it still remains a gorgeous game on the base N3 MacBook Air. Next we are looking at Baldur's Gate 3 which is basically the biggest RPG hit of last year and one of my favourite games to play on a Mac. However it's also the first time we're coming up to some disappointment with the performance of the MacBook Air M3 because it only has 8GB of RAM. So here we're running at 1080p with the graphics preset set to low. AMD FSR 1.0 is set to performance mode so this is running at a lower resolution being upscaled using the FSR 1.0 algorithm which doesn't look amazing. At the beginning of the game we're getting about 30 to 40 FPS which is okay but considering that this is the easy part of the game to run it's not really doing too well but at this stage it is playable however when we get to act 3 in the game you can see that the performance tanks and it becomes basically unplayable so this is really due to the fact that we are running at 7.34 gigabytes according to the metal hard on the top right and the game is basically overloading the RAM of this system and this is exacerbated by the fact that this is a unified memory architecture 8 gigabytes needs to account for the system the graphics memory and general system memory as well so going anywhere near that 8 gigabyte limit is pretty disastrous and when that happens it basically starts using the internal solid state drive as what's called swap space and as fast as the internal SSD is it's not as fast as RAM so everything crawls to a grind and the game becomes very laggy and slow to respond so you might think it's okay because this is a turn based game but actually it just doesn't feel very good to play. And this is a shame because Baldur's Gate 3 is one of my favourite games of all time and on the Steam page it's advertised as even working on the base Apple Silicon M1 chip with 8GB of RAM which frankly 
is not true. And if you want to get more out of your Apple Silicon Mac, then you might want to turn to something like the Apple Arcade, which is full of very optimized games for the Apple Silicon Mac. Here we're looking at a game called Beast Bio Exo Arena Suit, which is basically a game similar to like Splatoon and Titanfall. You play pretty basic 3v3 rounds, and when you've powered in your ultimate ability, you can call in a giant mecha suit. Like I said, this game isn't very graphically demanding, but it does run at high settings at 1080p on the M3 MacBook Air. Also on Apple Arcade, we're looking at NBA 2K24 Arcade Edition. So again, this is a game designed to be played on all of the devices in the Apple ecosystem, including iPhone, iPad. And it simultaneously happens to look like one of the most realistic and graphically intensive games on the Mac, but it's clearly been downgraded from console versions and some of the animations and faces look terrible. So a lot of these Apple Arcade games are designed to run on on even lower end systems from a few years ago. And so the RAM usage here of about 2.6 gigabytes is very low and is coming nowhere close to hitting that eight gigabyte limit of this MacBook Air M3. So next up, we're looking at the game Final Fantasy VII Remake. So this is the first Windows game that we're testing on the Apple Silicon Mac. We're running here on low settings at 1080p. The game is being run through the translation layer crossover using something called D3D Metal. And this allows us to run this DirectX 12 game on the Apple Silicon Mac. So in general exploration, we're getting about 50 to 60 FPS, which is not too bad. However, this drops down significantly when we're actually playing in combat. We're getting about 30 to 40 FPS. So this is basically the equivalent of the game running on, say, a PlayStation 4, which was capped at 30 FPS at the time. But you have to remember, these Windows games were never designed to run on Apple Silicon hardware. The game has to be translated from Windows to Mac OS, x86-64 to ARM64 using Rosetta 2, and DirectX 12 to the Metal Graphics API. So really, it's kind of a miracle that any of these DirectX X12 games could even work on the Mac in the first place. And whilst this game performs a lot better on higher end Macs like the M3 Pro and M3 Max, I'd call this a playable frame rate for the base M3 MacBook Air. Now part two of the game has actually come out on PlayStation 5, it basically uses the exact same engine. So hopefully a future release is gonna be compatible with crossover and Apple Silicon Macs in the future. So lastly, we're gonna be looking at Grand Theft Auto 5, another Windows game being run through crossover. According to the Metal HUD, which is the F FPS marker on the top right hand side of the screen. The game is using DirectX 11 being run through D3D Metal, which personally I've found works better than running the game through DXVK. Here we're running at 1080p on basically default settings. Inside Franklin's house, we're getting about 90 to 110 FPS, which is not really a good indication of how the game actually works. Generally in proper gameplay, like driving around, walking around, etc., we're looking at frame rates of approximately 45 to 75 FPS. So it's quite variable, depends on what you're doing exactly. It's not super impressive for a game that's 10 years old now, but remember that this is still a demanding title. It's still one of the most realized open world games of all time. So a lot of people have asked me about thermal performance on the MacBook Air. Because this Mac has no fans, it's all been passively cooled. Here running GTA 5 at about 79, 80 degrees Celsius. Here I'm just fast forwarding, but basically the game has been running for over an hour at this point. When I come back to check the temperatures, we're running about 76 degrees. So it's actually gone down slightly. I'm not sure why that's happened. If any of you can suggest a good test for me to run, I'd like to apply it to a future MacBook M1, M2, M3 comparison video. So please make sure to suggest it in the comments. So not all Windows games are going to work well on the Apple Silicon Mac base M3. In fact, most of them do not. For example, Control is really hitting some memory pressure limits, which really affect performance in a negative way because something with more RAM can actually run this game fine. And here it's just very stuttery. So really, if you want to play games on the M3 MacBook Air, you probably want to be sticking to games that are actually optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. And it's really just a shame that Apple have released a brand new computer in 2024 with only eight gigabytes of RAM. The M3 chip is capable of playing all of these optimized games for Mac OS well. However, if you're playing something like Baldur's Gate 3 or you wanna do any kind of Windows gaming, you'll want to be upgrading to at least 16 gigabytes, which really increases the price by quite a lot. For me, this is a price increase of 200 pounds, which is nearly 20%. Taking this from something that's relatively affordable to something that's quite expensive, so as long as you stick to these natively optimized titles, which sit within the bounds of eight gigabytes of RAM, then the MacBook Air with the M3 chip is a very capable machine. However, if you have the budget, then I'd definitely consider upgrading to the M3 Pro chip, which has 18 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum, or just deciding to stick to more basic Mac OS games and buy the cheaper M2 MacBook Air. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.